Hi folks, this is Dr. John Collins at Springbrook Chiropractic in Newburgh, Oregon, and I'm back with part three of our health class. And I wanna just take a few moments to review what I said in part two. I talked about the definition of health, where I said health is the condition of the body in which functions are duly and efficiently discharged. That's from the Oxford English Dictionary. And uh, in our office, the working definition for the word health is, health is the presence of optimal function from the cellular level to the social level. And you may remember that I said, really, health isn't something that you either have or don't have, but health is really the state of your function. It's on a spectrum from no health, which is otherwise known as death, to optimal or perfect, theoretically perfect health, which nobody has, but uh, we all wanna drive in that direction. So health is really function. Health and function are inextricably linked. So when you're functioning very well, your health is good, okay, it's very good. Alrighty, hope that makes sense. There was a physician, he was pretty famous back in Grecian times. His name was Herophilus, and he said something really poetic and uh, profound. When health is absent, wisdom cannot reveal itself. Art cannot manifest, strength cannot fight. Wealth becomes useless and intelligence cannot be applied. And uh, yeah, those are some really heavy words. Uh, I've been in practice 25 years, and I can tell you, most people that I've spoken to, they, when you actually get down to talking about it, they say, yes, health is really the most important thing in my life, you know, because all the money in the world sometimes can't buy health, you know, so. All right, well, let's talk about our country. That's what I want to talk about for a minute here on this section of the class. I want to talk about how we're doing as a nation. I've asked this question to so many people over the years. I've been teaching the class since 2006. And there are a few people that believe America has really good health. They're in the minority. Um, the vast majority of attendees to my class, when asked, you know, how do they think America is doing, the United States of America, they say, well, I think we're below average. You know, we're below average. And a few say, I think we're in last place. But most people believe that the US is kind of below average. But the reality is, if by numerous studies, World Health Organization, Institute of Health, uh, many others, um, back since the 90s. If you compare us against the other wealthy nations, you know, you can't compare the United States against Sudan or some, you know, poverty-stricken nation. You have to compare us to the modern nations that have high-speed rail and airports and high-speed highways and, and uh, you know, fiber, high-speed fiber internet and stuff. That's these countries here, right? So compared to them, we're in last place. Compared to them, we're in last place. So says this study, so says this study, and numerous others. It's basically not debated, folks. The United States is in last place, unfortunately, with respect to health. I'm sorry to bear the bad news. I'm just the messenger, though. Don't get angry at me. <laughs> Let's talk about what's people die of or die of prematurely also. Heart disease and cancer, a lot of people have heard about that. Um, these are pretty much, you know, more or less tied for the lead. One thing a lot of people don't know about is third place, according to the uh, Johns Hopkins University, British Medical Journal, the Journal of the American Medical Association. Uh, the third leading cause of death is medical error in the United States. We receive a lot of medical care in the United States, more than pretty much any other country. And uh, doctors are human, and sometimes they make mistakes, and sometimes they make mistakes while doing something that's very risky or dangerous, like surgery. Sometimes they make mistakes while prescribing medications or doing other procedures uh, that aren't maybe surgeries, tests, and things like that. Um, so what's also interesting is that this only says medical errors. You can actually add on deaths that are due to medical care that weren't errors. Nobody made a mistake, the surgery went perfectly, or the medication was properly prescribed, and the patient still dies. They just die where they wouldn't have died otherwise had they not received the medical care. So that's just medical deaths, and if you added that on, that would add more here. I don't know how much more, 50,000, 100,000, I don't remember, but it would add more on. Now, this is according to you know, mainstream sources. I tend to 
have a little skepticism about this number. I think it's a little low, personally. Um, and there are researchers who believe that medical care, errors plus properly rendered care, may indeed be the leading cause of death in the United States. And if that's true, that would just be almost criminal, really. Um, it's possible. It's possible. I remain open that that's a possibility. I've been in the healthcare system a long time, so I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of bad things. You know, or not no, not always firsthand, but I mean, heard a lot of stories, and uh, not good. So, what should be the purpose of the healthcare system? That's what I'm going to get into on the next class. Okay. Hopefully, it's to help people get healthy and stay healthy. Right. Unfortunately, sometimes it's focused on making a lot of money. But in the next class, part four, that's where we're going to pick up. But for now, health, remember, health is all about function. And the United States, unfortunately, has the worst health. Okay, so I'll see you at the next class. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it.